Spurs news tonight. DeJounte Murray traded away to Atlanta. For three future first round picks. It's definitely the most young, exciting backcourt in the East. Am I wrong in thinking like the Hawks? That's the best backcourt in the NBA, right? Atlanta Hawks at their peak. What does that look like? The talent we have and just everything around, if we could put it together. Top three team in the East. I really believe that. Austin Celtics finally able to turn out the lights on Atlanta. Win a championship, you know what I'm saying? Not just not just be in the picture, just be in the running. Like I want to come into the season, like people look at that, they can they can win. Or they got a chance. Atlanta's now dropped five consecutive games. Essentially, anyone other than Trey Young and, and now Jalen Johnson's coming on as kind of a foundational piece for them. Everybody else, that includes Murray, should be available. Fair to say, after a year and a half, that transaction is not one that you would want to sort of do again if you were the Hawks. Ever since making the 2021 Eastern Conference Finals, Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks have had disappointing season after disappointing season. And after about a third of the way into the 2023-2024 NBA season, it's looking to be another one of those seasons as they're sitting at 14 and 19 currently. But what it feels like nobody's talking about is how incredible of a season Trey Young is having at 25 years old. He's averaging 28.2 points per game and 11.3 assists. So who's to blame for the Atlanta Hawks continual disappointment and where should they even go from here today in this video we will dive into how the Atlanta Hawks are quietly wasting prime Trey Young when the Hawks first traded for Trey Young in the 2018 draft, giving up Luka Doncic and gaining Trey Young and a 2019 first round pick, although controversial at the time, it seemed like the Hawks were poised to start building something in the Eastern Conference. And after two losing records in Trey Young's first two seasons, they would break out during the 2020-2021 season going 41 and 31. And at the time, it seemed like the Hawks had a super talented young core. They had Trey Young at 22 years old, Kevin Herter at 22, DeAndre Hunter 23, John Collins 23, Cam Reddish 21, not to mention Clint Capella at 26 years old. They acquired in a trade and signing Bogdan Bogdanovich. They would finish fifth in the Eastern Conference that season, defeat the Knicks in five games in the first round, and then shock the NBA world in a game seven that broke Ben Simmons, defeating the number one seed, Philadelphia 76ers. Although they would fall to Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks in six games, the future was bright for Atlanta. They had their superstar in Trey Young, they had draft capital, they had their young and veteran pieces around him, but then 2022, they would take a little bit of a step back, going 43 and 39, finishing ninth, making the play in, and ending up getting the eighth seed in the 2022 playoffs, where they would lose in five games to the Miami Heat. Trey Young would have an absolutely abysmal series, averaging 15 points per game on a shocking 32% from the field. That offseason, they would make some adjustments, trading Kevin Herter to the Kings, acquiring Hiring in a blockbuster deal, DeJounte Murray from the San Antonio Spurs, coming off an all-star season, basically for three firsts, but yet they'd have a very similar result. Going 41 and 41, finishing eighth in the Eastern Conference, somehow beating the Heat in the 7-8 play-in game, but losing in the opening round in a six-game series versus the Boston Celtics. And at this point, we started to wonder, what is Atlanta's plan from here? They had made a decently risky move move that offseason to acquire a rising star alongside Trey, but yet they would get pretty much the same result. Matter of fact, they were second in the league in offensive rating and 26th in defense in 2022, and then were seventh in offensive rating and 22nd in defense in 2023, and would actually drop four spots in net rating. And that brings us to the 2023-2024 season, where the Hawks are 14 and 20. They've been terrible at home this year, had a pretty poor December, but yet quite Quietly, with no one really paying attention, Trey Young is having arguably the best season of his career. Averaging 28.2 points per game and 11.3 assists, which is good for second in the league behind Tyrese Halliburton. But he's also hitting 38% of his threes on a whopping 9.3 attempts per game. Matter of fact, in December alone, Trey averaged 30.4 points per game, 12.2 assists per game on 48, 42, 84 splits, becoming the only player to average 30 and 12 over a month in the three-point era. Yet the Hawks would go four and 10 
in December. And as much hype as Trey Young was getting in 2021 and 2022, after a down season last year by his standards, he's completely back to 2021 Trey but yet nobody's talking about it. And obviously that's because the Hawks just aren't that good of a team. So who is to blame for this? Let's take a look at their roster. First and foremost, the demise of John Collins is something that is somewhat puzzling. I know he had that weird finger injury in his last season with Atlanta. The team didn't want him to get surgery. He played through it. But two to three years ago, nobody saw this coming for John Collins. It's really a sad story. As he's now a below average NBA player in Utah. Then if we take a look at Bogey, he may be 31, but he's surely not showing any signs of slowing down, averaging 17.7 points per game, shooting 38% from three as well on almost nine attempts per game. He's also having one of the best seasons of his career and is one of the favorites for sixth man of the year. Then we have Jalen Johnson, the 20th overall pick in 2021, having an absolutely breakout season. If you have not watched Jalen Johnson this year, I encourage you to go check out some highlights. He's absolutely balling. Check out this poster he had on Chet last night in a game where Atlanta beat the Oklahoma City Thunder and he had 28 points, seven rebounds, four steals, and shot 61% from the field. This man went from averaging 5.6 points per game last year and only 15 minutes of play and shooting 29% from three to now playing 30 minutes a game, 15.3 points, 8.1 rebounds, 41% from three, shooting 59.6% from the field with an insane true shooting percentage of 67.7%. Jalen Johnson and Bogey are not the problem. Even Clint Capella has been fine to above average this year. He's pretty much been the same player statistically for the past three seasons. However, he is $20 million and almost 30. The Hawks should consider moving him at the deadline depending on what offers are actually out there when it does come to issues on this team let's start with maybe not the biggest one but certainly an issue deandre hunter he was drafted fourth overall atlanta made a pretty big move for him now luckily they had taken jackson hayes at eight so it still was a good trade looking back on it even now however what happened to deandre hunter's supposed three and d utility this man has been absolutely abysmal on defense this year he has the worst defensive rating of anyone on his team that plays plays over 11 minutes per game, and he hasn't even been remotely a good defender since 2021. Now he's shooting the crap out of the ball this year, so we have to give him that. A career high 40.4% from three on a career high in attempts. He has been sidelined for the past couple weeks with a knee injury, but I feel like if you're Landry Fields, the Hawks GM, you have to move him at the deadline. He's not serving your team in the long run and the type of team that you need to build around Jalen Johnson and Trey Young. And when it comes to AJ Griffin, I don't even know what's going on with AJ. If you're not familiar, he had a pretty good rookie season last year as the 16th pick in the 2022 NBA draft. And then this season, he's just not in the rotation barely playing and he did have a stretch I know a couple weeks ago where he was out for personal reasons but he's been back for three or four games and he's recording DNPs at this point. My assumption is that Quinn Snyder has just deemed his defense completely unplayable but I'm hoping post trade deadline if the Hawks do in fact sell a couple pieces that AJ will get 18 to 20 minutes a night the rest of the season so that Atlanta can at least see what they have in him let him develop and see if he can come out of this sophomore slump. At the end of the day, the two biggest pieces of blame I'm putting on the Hawks starts with number one, DeJounte Murray. It's time to trade him. I'm not exactly sure what the Hawks could get for DeJounte, but if you can get 50 cents on the dollar for what you paid for him, I think you have to do it. His contract's going up next season, seven or $8 million. Plus, it's just quite clear to me that DeJounte Murray does not fit this team. As long as you have Trey Young and shooting, this is going to be a good offensive team. You don't need more offense, in my opinion. You need defense. And DeJounte Murray has been pretty average defensively for the past two seasons with the Hawks. And even if you go into some advanced metrics, including EPM and defensive EPM, heck, even defensive rating with the Spurs, he wasn't that great. He just filled the stat sheet by leading the league in steals that season. As I was finishing up this video, a report came out yesterday that the Atlanta Hawks are open to trading anybody on their roster, not named Trey Young and Jalen Johnson, which I believe is 100% the correct move. Just a few days ago when I first recorded this video, there was talks about them acquiring Pascal Siakam, being buyers at the trade deadline, forcing 
this roster construction to try to compete more, which I thought was a huge mistake. So for Trey Young's sake, for Atlanta Hawks fans sake, for Jalen Johnson's sake, for Quinn Snyder's sake, and for their young pieces like AJ Griffin and Kobe Bufkin's sake, I'm glad to hear they are willing to trade at the deadline. I'll believe it when I see it. You could easily keep someone like Bogey who's having a career season and is on a team-friendly contract while still trimming the fat and retooling for the future. Plus, let's be honest, I still think this roster can contend for the play-in tournament without some of these pieces. While setting themselves up better for the next two to three years and giving their young guys some time to develop. If you're a Hawks fan, what do you think? Do you want them to stand pat at the trade deadline? Would you actually want them to go out and buy another piece? Or do you want them to retool and recenter around Trey Young and Jalen Johnson? I'm confident to say that if the Hawks do what they say they're going to do, in this report that came out yesterday that I will completely reverse my course on their idea of wasting Trey Young's prime. And I'll actually be pretty hopeful for the future of this franchise as Trey Young enters the best years of his career. But make no mistake, the majority of the blame goes on ownership. The owner's son, Nick Ressler, and Landry Fields, they were the ones that lobbied for this DeJounte Murray trade, throwing previous GM Travis Schlenk under the bus. We will see what happens over the coming weeks. If you guys enjoyed this video, check out this video I made on how Tyrese Halliburton became the NBA's newest superstar here. And as always, we'll see you on the hardwood.